Michael Perry. I'm the seventh and eighth grade social studies here, and uh, it's my first year to enjoy this this really rewarding process of uh, project-based learning uh, with your students. It's, it's really been a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot from them in the experience, so I'm very thankful for that personally. And I will let our students take it away. Hi, and welcome to the seventh grade culture study. So this is a print and, uh, sorry, the print and haiku making station. So basically how we made the prints was we had to find a picture to base our prints off of. So we went around campus and took pictures of nature or old buildings, something that like called out to us. And then later we chose one that kind of like we felt drawn towards. Art style called printing. And today I will explain the process. First, we started by tracing the outline of the photo with a pencil and some tracing paper. Second, after that, we carve out the black or gray lines with the carving knife. And lastly, I will show you how to make a print. Please sit back, let me put my magic real quick. <laughs> after that, you grab a piece of paper, put it on there, uh, grab the wooden spoon, rub it on there gently, not hard or fast, because if if it's fast, it will scoot down. Tsubasho. He was the first one in Japan to make a proper haiku. A proper haiku is a five, seven, five syllable count. And they are usually based about something in nature. It could be an old building, a tree, a garden, and match them with the pictures that we've printed. It was a very difficult process, especially for me, because I don't know a lot about Spanish. I am culture also referred as the golden age of Japanese history. We always share a little bit about what we learned. Carson will now share a little bit about Sandra. Samurai um, sword is amazing. The high quality skill number is coming in. Uh, Some welcome to Samurai you with your sword sword and a tati, which is bigger than a katana. Samurai uh, are involved with Miyagi because they have to dress perfectly and look sophisticated. Um, some other I researched high and Japanese fashion. Wealthy females would wear very colorful silk robes with up to 40 layers of silk. Males would wear long robes, not as many layers as women, and not as colorful. That was to make them look wealthy and sophisticated. Okay. I did the high-end period food, and I did this because I wanted to see how different it went from back then to what it is now. Uh, this is yummy because of sushi, one of the main dishes is just rice, salmon, and a uh, type of seaweed called nori. Japan, language was influenced by the Chinese kanji, but then they adapted it and made it their own. Uh, it includes kana, hiragana, and katakana. Even though uh, some people had the same topic, they uh, interpreted it differently and focused on different uh, parts of it. As you can see, Japan took influence from China, and Miyabi is present in different parts of Haiyan culture. I think everyone chooses like a very unique way in whatever would they like to do. And even if they did pick the same way, uh, they choose a different way to explain it. And now on to Danny to explain the uh, population of population deaths in Japan. Prefectures. Um, prefectures are like states. There are 47 of them across four regions of Japan. Um, we found the population density for each of our prefectures. Uh, and we also wrote letters to them. Aaron's going to tell you about the population density. Uh, we use scatter plots to show the increase and decrease in population and population density. For example, Tokyo is increasing in population, so it is very big. This happening because young people are leaving small towns to live in big cities, thus making J Japan more urban. Also making small towns ghost towns. But, uh, like Nagoi, uh, uh, that is now inhabited by most adults. Now Sarah and Maddie will talk about the letters we wrote to the prefectures. This trimester, all the students in seventh grade wrote letters to a Japanese prefecture of their choice and have been translated in the In the letters, we talked about the population that is, de that is declining and asked them why it was. We gave them our advice on how to prevent, on how to prevent losing people and asked how life was there. People, some people actually got responses from these prefectures, and Sarah is going to talk about those. After sending the letters, we waited a few weeks for the replies. Many people didn't get a reply, though, but luckily we did. Um, we learned about their culture and what is popular there. They also told us places to visit if we ever went there. We also asked them about how they felt about the population density 
about the population declining or why it may be declining. Um, now, Jesse, Sophia, Tiago, Abby, and Everett will be talking about the Japanese teapots we made in art. This is the tea station. I'm Jesse. This is my co-host, Sophia. This is Tiago, Abby, and Everett. Um, we made these tea bowls in art class. Um, there are five stages of the tea bowls. First is when it's at its most valuable and when we form a tea bowl, when it, and that's called plastic. The second stage is leather hard will it when it's still malleable but less. So um, the second, the third stage is bone dry or greenware where it is at its most fragile point and it takes on a whitish color. And um, the next stage is bisque, bisque, bisque fire. This something fire. Um, where then after that you glaze it, and it that's when, you add, and then you glaze fired it, which makes it shiny. In science, we weighed the tea bowls every day until they were fired. We weighed them when they were at the leather hard stage, and each day they got heavier as air molecules were mixed up with them. We then did a tea tasting and tried all of the different traditional teas. Um, we tasted buckwheat, soybeans, and barley. Um, some people thought the tea was really good, and some people thought it was really bitter, and just not good. Um, people love to take the tea in Japan. <coughs> the, these teas go all the way back to Confucianism, because Confucianism was all about patience. While they drink the tea, they enjoy calligraphy and making ikebanas. Ikebanas are a traditional Japanese flower arrangement. Thank you for coming to our presentation. You may now try soy, barley, or buckwheat tea. Feel free to explore.